Hello, I'm Crystal. Welcome to Quap Talk on Think Tech. This morning, Tuesday, we have a relatively disturbing topic. Why is it disturbing? Because it's so incredibly uh, enticing and attractive to a certain type of uh, an audience, and it creates a lot of consequential. Uh, concepts of sexuality. We're talking about porn, online porn. Porn and sexuality, you know, where's it gone? Because the whole online, the whole internet has just taken over our lives. So today we have a very important topic we're going to go into. And you're thinking, ooh, porn, we can talk about this stuff. Yes, we will, but you have to know that there are a lot of issues that we bring out there that may be not appropriate for some people to be watching, but then again, porn isn't appropriate. I mean, everyone's going to be doing it anyway. So we're here to talk about this. I've got an amazing guest here, and she is just, I'm going to let her introduce herself. I use Sarah Watswati, who ha is an associate professor at the Women's Study PhD, has an incredible background in women's studies mm -hmm. and your, I don't know if it's a fascination or is it an obsession um, or is it just a pure interest in your you know, research in this? Yeah, so um, my background is in women's studies and because sort of like growing up, I see all of this sort of like differences between how boys and girls were raised, even in my family. So for example, um, I was not allowed to eat more than I should so that I should stay slim and all of that versus my brother would um, be encouraged to eat whatever he wants and he can stay out as late uh -huh. as he could the or have a stay over or sleep over. But me, I have to be back by like what, eight or six, you know. <laughs> and but you so grew up in Indonesia. Indonesia. In Indonesia. So do you yes. think that's a cultural thing or? It's a cultural thing, but the same thing as well here yeah. that's happening here sure. I mean, if you look at the dress code for students right girls versus boys we do have double standard there as well True. right and so this idea of what girls should look like boys should look like and how we raise them differently and particularly uh, in terms of sexuality yes it's okay for boys to be naughty boys but when it's a girl, right. when they're naughty, it's all about she's a slut, she's yes. this, she's that, right? And so girls and women can't experience and express their sexuality, even in the U.S. Uh, versus boys, they can play around, check out porn. That's the cool thing right. to do. Um, and, and that's why I'm so fascinated by this and fascinated by the issue of porn because people may think or feel that this is a trivial issue. But that's why it matters, because people think that it doesn't matter when, in fact, that regulates how we desire, right? It teaches us how or what how to yes, love. and it's been a big problem. It's been in you know, it's been in the media for a long time, or the influence or the 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 misuse of mm -hmm. porn and how that miseducates a lot of uh, younger teens now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's do a little background on Absolutely. the whole kind of beginning of internet porn mm -hmm. and where it's taken us today. Yeah. So the internet is really a game changer in terms of the porn industry. Because before, if you had to go to a certain newsstand and ask somebody to buy that for you, yeah. or you have to sort of uh, go to a certain video rental, yes, right, to, <laughs> to um, watch these videos, now you can watch or access any of this um, at the comfort of your own home. Yes, can I just tell you this country. morning doing my research, <laughs> I, I clicked on, I didn't want to, but it's just for my research, mm -hmm. I had to click on. Mm -hmm. I clicked Asian women porn yes. and yes. poof, yes. oh my God. I, I, I couldn't even look at all of them. As I was mm -hmm. having my coffee, I couldn't believe I was watching this stuff. It yes. is so in your face. Yes, yes. So, um, but the internet in some ways has, I don't want to say positive or productive, but it really does change literally the face of porn, right? Because before we see a particular kind of face, particular kind of narrative, um, that if we want to go and see porn, that's like very typical of like what a particularly heterosexual porn looks right. like, okay. right? And now that people can upload their own uh -huh. sort of amateur porn or whatever you want to call right. it, and different people can um, sort of create their own fantasies in some ways, and now we can even be interactive with the webcam, yeah. you know, all that stuff. It really changes what, how we experience even porn. But what is also just as is important is that how porn actually influences the internet, right? So if you have, um, now you go to all these websites to buy and shop, uh, you know, shoes and whatnot. Right. But what's interesting is that 
um, the secure, you know, the payment system that is now more secure is thanks to the internet. Right? Be I mean, so thanks to the porn industry, because people wanted to buy um, or like to have access to these videos. Right. And they wanted With to make privacy. sure that uh -huh. their credit card is safe. And so porn allows the internet industry or like forces the internet um, to sort of like have a more secure payment system. Right. So that's one thing. The other thing is, I don't know if you remember or young enough or old enough in some ways to remember uh, when I was growing up, I remember wanting to download just one image, one image. It was a dial-up, you know, you remember that sort of like, um, you have to wait a few minutes yeah. just to download yeah. one image. Right, right. And talk so about now, porn, right? Oh. When you're all horny and then you're going to like download <laughs> one image that takes 10 minutes, you kind of like, okay, that's it. I mean, wait, like, I'm not going to wait. How many, right? or is there like a study on how yes. many women actually mm -hmm. go and use porn to... There are. I don't have the number, but what but is interesting, the difference between uh, porn for women, porn for heterosexual women okay, versus right. porn for men shows that porn for heterosexual women actually allows for space um, for women to be more uh, playful, right. more sort of experimental with their sexuality versus for men in some ways. It, it, it's really a, a similar narrative, right? Really? Because if you look at porn, I don't know if this morning you actually <laughs> no, um, I didn't go that clicked far. or any of that, but... I would be late for work if I... <laughs> yeah, so heterosexual porn uh -huh. usually ends when the men ejaculate. Ejaculate. Okay. So what does Finito. that tell Exactly. So what does that tell us about women's pleasure versus uh, men's pleasure, right? So what we learn from porn then, that men's pleasure is more important than women because everything ends when men uh, sort of, you know, desire is, is satisfied, mm. right? But we don't really learn about what does women want what but in a lot of porn, mm -hmm. don't they have the woman climax or they pretend to because of that the sake is, that of, is, but it's also for the men, exactly. the fake orgasm. Exactly. And even if you look at the sort of videos, yeah. um, I don't know why I do this, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, women who are masturbating yeah. on this online porn uh -huh. sites, we see them um, enjoying themselves and then looking at the camera because it is the gaze it's of the, the voyeur, men. Right. Exactly, right. So in other words, even in terms of pleasuring themselves, Right? They're pleasuring themselves because there's an audience. There's this presumably a male audience uh -huh. who's watching them. So again, it's not their own pleasure because it, maybe they want to touch themselves in different ways. Right. Right? But because there is this sort of expectation to touch yourself a certain way so that you can pleasure yourself while still looking sexy, uh -huh. right? That is kind of hard. You want to pleasure yourself. You want to have an orgasm sort of like face, but you have to look pretty at the same <laughs> so, time. So <laughs> it's acting. It's, it's really... It is. It is. It is work. Right, but mm -hmm. how is it not pleasuring the woman? Mm -hmm. Maybe because they like to be mm -hmm. uh, gazed at and to feel like somebody's spying on them. Isn't that a sexual pleasure in itself? Absolutely. So here's uh, my take on that. I'm not um, arguing that we should ban or, or censor sort of all this porn, right? But what I am saying is that there is only particular narrative. There is a dominant narrative out there about porn, right? And this is what we need to challenge, right? Okay. So we need more variety. And what the internet allows us to do is to have a little bit more access right. to, let's say, queer porn, right? right? That's huge. Non-heteronormative sort of porn. Yeah. Right. And so different kind of porn. And so what would it look like to have a heterosexual porn that doesn't again sort of just, you know, come on women's face or right. do this or that, right? And so what is what what is that? Or even big look black like? penis. That's like the main thing I see on Absolutely, porn absolutely, things. right? And so even porn and this is my my areas of specialty is actually race and gender and sexuality, okay. right? And so um, my study actually looks at Asian women in particular, but uh, you're absolutely right because this idea of black menhood, right, black masculinity as being hypersexualized, mm -hmm. right? And so again, we learn about race also from porn. And this is why earlier we, we think that porn, oh, you know, it's just porn. But we actually learn about, you know, race, about gender and sexuality. Interesting. I mean, is that the, the chicken and egg? Mm -hmm. Thing because mm -hmm. culturally, if you're talking about Asian women and the suppression, you know, the image of the repressed and suppressed woman, um, submissive, is something culturally just, mm -hmm. you know, in Asia, where if you see it in the uh, porn, 
is you know they're ticking from the cultural re relationships or in or you're saying that maybe porn is kind of reflecting or not reflecting they're the ones who are representing mm -hmm. what it really is in real life mm -hmm. yeah so uh, I'm, I'm I'm less concerned about which comes first you know the egg yeah. or the you know the chicken and, and, and that sort of question and um, focusing on the consequences right okay regardless of which one comes first the egg or the chicken right mm -hmm. what matters now is that that porn does in some ways affect the ways in which we think about gender race and sexuality right yes. it helps us think about um, what are possible in terms of our fantasies, right? This is why um, one of my sort of, you know, um, motto or like slogan or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, when I talk about porn is that the more you watch porn, the less creative you are uh, when it comes to making love, right? Because that's actually what people think, you know, right. we go and see a porn because we want to experience this kinky or this different yeah. sort of like sexuality. But when you actually studied which I did, um, you look at very similar narrative in terms of the, the formula. This is what's going to happen, this is what's going to happen, right. this is what's going to happen. It's not like watching a mystery movie and you're kind of like, oh, who is like yeah. going to kill this? Who's going and to And you look at a teenager, let's just say mm -hmm. like a 14-year-old boy mm -hmm. who doesn't have any experience with sex, they go on yes. and they educate themselves mm -hmm. um, from these videos yes. uh, or, or you know, clips and they their concept of sexuality are these twisted, over-fantasized of images that dictate what he thinks he should be doing to his partner or should be done to himself. Absolutely. And, and I think there is actually a study um, that shows that 14-year-old boys actually think that grown-up women don't have pubic hair. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Amongst other things. Yes. Oh, right? Gee, and yeah. so because if that is what you see everywhere, right, right? in all of this sort of, not only, and here's, here's the uh, prevalence of porn is that it's not only within the porn websites or whatnot, right. right? But if you think about some of our music videos, right, are directed by porn directors. Oh, really? Right? And also, if you look at magazines for women mm. that teach women how to have sex, how to have Brazilian wax or whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. That, in other words, even though you don't watch porn, yeah. Right? That porn industry, porn uh, culture. spills over. Exactly. Still Jeez. influences how you live, how you interact with others, how you um, have sex with another, right? But it's already, it's just so out of control that how do you even start to think about, you're talking about the consequences of it, mm -hmm. how do you even, you know, start to find your way around this. Absolutely. So um, that's why you need to take women's studies classes, Yay! for example, okay. right? Or we have uh, this right. conversation, right, about, you know, what porn does and what porn does not do, right? Because I think it's always important to question, what does it do? Like, Let's leave this question do? to the audience. What porn does and what porn doesn't do, how does that inflict pain and how does that affect the uh, you know, the image of the Asian women, and we have so much to talk about. Let's take a breather, let's come back, talk about all these questions, and we'll come back. And by the way, this is only part one because it's just the tip of the iceberg. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Big Tech Hoi. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning, I'm your co host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. So why porn? We're talking about porn here with Professor Saraswati, or are you? Um, and you know, and like I said, it is disturbing because it's just such a huge market out there. You're talking about businesses changing because of the demand on it, and yet we're talking about the effects of the image of women and how uh, boys are educated or miseducated to treat women and, and vice versa. So, 
Okay, so tell us where where we should go with this. Yeah. So um, first of all, we have to understand like as for, um, the first rule is that it's not about censorship, right? Because what I would like to um, sort of support here is spaces where women can express and experience their sexuality, right? Okay. And so that there are like more spaces for us to experience that or to express that rather than say, okay, enough about porn, right? And so that's the first step is to understand that, right? Okay. And the second step is to ask sort of like women to begin to listen to their bodies yes. because for as long as I've been on this planet, right, how many times do people actually ask you if you're in a romantic relationship, let's say, that day, that night, let's say, your partner asks you, mm. how would you like to be touched, my mm. love, right? How do you like, how would you like to be if, touched? If you're lucky enough to have a partner yes. to ask yes. you. Yes, right, but, but, but that's part of that education, right? Because yes. here's the thing, when you've been with someone for 20 years, or 10 years, or five years, or two years, uh -huh. you'd say, oh, you got it I down. Got it. I got it's it down. Just a formula. Right? I know. Like I know. I know. I know what she here. likes. Yeah, <laughs> I know what you like. Okay. But here's the thing: you're a living, breathing, um, doing exactly human being yeah. that that have like different emotions every day, right? Right. And so last night you might want to have it rough, right? right. Uh, but today or tonight um, you feel like you want something soft, right? right? And so you need to listen to your own bodies. Right, yeah. first of all, and stop sort of like, oh, let me think about that porn sort of video. What should I look like? You know, how should I moan to look, oh, you know, right. beautiful, to look sexy? So you're saying right? that this porn is affecting the way women think of they course. need to please the men even more so. Of course. Por pornography is a form of media, obviously, I don't need to tell you that. Mm. Uh, but all forms of media influences how we experience the world, how we understand the world, yeah. right? And how we want to be in this world. It teaches us, it teaches us how to be a man, how to be a woman, right. what it means right. to be rich, what mm. it means to be poor, what it means to be healthy, what it means to be sick, for example, right? And so if you look at um, any forms of media, what are some of the dominant representations of sick people mm. there, right? Mm. Because in some ways, there's only one way to experience sickness, right? It's all about pain and it's all about mm. misery and all of Let's that. Let's talk about pain now that you mentioned absolutely, that. Because absolutely. we need to get to that, otherwise we're never going to touch on I that. Know. Pain and pain was our original kind of theme, yes. but it's so much to lay out the ground rules for. Mm -hmm. um, again, the con connection between the Asian women and mm -hmm. the image of them receiving pain. Mm -hmm. Is that something cultural or is that something that porn has produced to feed to the male audience? Do you think women actually like to look like they're in pain? Yeah. Is that part of the yeah. so, fine line? So what I did was I did um, a study of online porn videos under the category of Asian. Now if you go to um, online porn websites, yeah. there are these filters, right? right? So one, for example, is most viewed videos right. or most recent videos, let's say, right? Because when even when you click on the Asian category, there are bound to be more than 10,000 videos. Right. And obviously, I'm not going to be able to watch all of them. Nobody can study all of them, right? And so what people do is they use these filters. Okay. Now, here's what's interesting. When I click on the most recent videos, the videos that appear tend to be more diverse. There's the college girls, there's the Kama Sutra girls, right? And there's like all this different narrative. It's, right, it's more the, the theme, di diverse. Right, yeah. But when I click on the most viewed videos, yeah. all of them seem very similar, right? In their sort of facial expression, uh -huh. right? And in their sort of like audio in terms of, I'm not going to make that noise, <laughs> but uh, because I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know how my Can students will, will, will look at me. It's not even, even the fake orgasm, but it's this sort of like um, squealing of pain kind of. But that's Japanese culture, isn't it? The no means yes culture. Right? So, but that's what's interesting about this is that why is it that when it's most viewed, Right, that these are the kinds of things that 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 show up, right? Okay, these sort of like okay. women and so Asian women and pain, right? Right. And so what that means is that when they click on that Asian category and they, uh, when they choose all of you know like yeah. maybe twenty uh, out of like twenty videos, that they tend to click on those thumbnails, right? That show this woman in pain right. rather than all the other ones. That's how they became the most viewed. So that's subliminally, they are associating pain with yes. the Asian woman's yes. face. Yes. So that's one of my arguments. Okay. Is that Asian as a racial category, right, uh -huh. becomes experienced and expressed 
through these emotions and yeah. that emotion is pain. In other words, when you click on something, you kind of expect or want to see this particular experience, right? And so it's interesting that when you click on Asian uh -huh. category, that what you, what you want to experience is to see women in pain. And this is also what's interesting about when you click on the Asian category, yeah. it didn't say Asian woman, does it? Right? It only say Asian. Uh -huh. But what's also interesting in my study as well is that it translates into Asian women. Right. Out of the 100 videos that I analyze, only one that shows Asian men with a non-Asian um, sort of partner. Uh -huh. Right? But all of the other videos are Asian women. So the category of Asian already means Asian women. It's an assumption. Right. That, right? right. And not only that it's Asian women, but Asian women in pain. Right. Do you think that, again, this is a male-driven industry, mm -hmm. obviously. For well, the heterosexual porn, I have to say. Okay, yes, right, absolutely. right. We'll yes. focus mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. And so do you think that these Asian women reluctantly mm -hmm. do it? Or do they feel like, because again, going back to the mm -hmm. culture of Asian women, mm -hmm. is that it's okay to be submissive and passive. It's not like I'm losing my ground. It's mm -hmm. the yin-yang, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And again, it is okay to express yourself in whatever way you want. So if you personally really, really love to perform pain, right. and that is that what gets you, you know, what makes you happy, you personally as a woman, and that's okay too. Because we are not here, again, to even censor you, to even tell you this is how you're supposed to experience sexuality, right? right? But the problem becomes when that is the only way, the only way okay. you can experience yourself. In other words, um, today, like I said, you know, maybe I don't want to perform pain, right. but tomorrow maybe I want to. If it just, if pain becomes only one of all those things in that repertoire of sexual experiences. Do you think that that's the lack of education or the lack of conversations that ha that's happening with the Asian mm -hmm. women as a reason yeah. for this? Yeah, so it's called patriarchy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that damn P word right, again. <laughs> the P, the different P, right? <laughs> Not the dirty P word. But, um, but in some ways, wait, it's dirty. Anyways, but, um, <laughs> but, but what... But that's what it does. That's what patriarchy does. It's a male-dominated society. And right? porn is male-dominated though, right? Exactly, exactly. So it, that's part of that, right? So that's right. the problem, right? So if we can just slash that patriarchy, right? Imagine what porn can look like. What is porn for, for women? What, yeah. women. What, what is porn for women? Yeah, so, so what's one of, there's one study that says that the porn industry for heterosexual women failed and they failed because they used the formula for male right, right. and just um, sort of Replaced it translate with it. <laughs> that into women. So for example, I inst you know, instead of focusing on intimacy and connection yes. and storylines, they focus on this dude, this really handsome, really <laughs> sexy and all of that. And, and which is, you know, again, could be one story, but not the only <sighs> story of that. And, and what, did, right, what does that mean? Because what does it mean for women? to be aroused, right? Because we're never really asked that question, right? So if somebody actually asks you, like, what is it that turns you on right now? But again, mm -hmm. this is something, it's so subtle. Again, yes. we're talking about something that's so non-tangent. Mm -hmm. How do you translate into, into a porn industry where porn it, in itself is so masculine? Mm -hmm. How do you, is it a different medium? Is it not possible to have porn for women? Because it's not the right medium. It is possible in some ways because um, there are f people who call their products as feminist pornography, right? There are people who um, call their products as queer pornography, non-heterosexual, um, gay pornography, lesbian right, pornography, right? right? And so, so in some ways, porn itself can, porn itself is just like money in some ways, right? Uh, in other words, it doesn't have anything unless you put meanings onto it, So right? porn's just a platform for you to Yes, yes. Perform. So um, earlier days sort of feminist would differentiate between pornography and erotica. Right, of course. Right? And so pornography means it's a sort of like um, degrading sort of like toward women. It's not sort of celebrating women's sexuality. It's all about men and men's pleasure and men's sexuality. I know Fifty Shades mm -hmm. of Grey is a little passe mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. but do you think that that kind of accentuated that problem? Well, in Ironically, one of the biggest problem with uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, people say, is that um, it doesn't allow that sort of conversations about consent, 
right? Mm. And so BDSM, um, one of the other chapter in my book um, also talks about BDSM, right? And so one of the most important things about BDSM is consent. Um, yeah. You know, it's about being safe, Sane, right. sane and consensual. There are certain roles that you mm -hmm. have to play with. Right. And so when it is um, so when it is not about consent and when it is again the sort of fantasy of rich man, you know, versus this sort of young woman um, and having that kind of violent or this sort of role play, right? Uh, that that could be problematic. But when BDSM uh, or or role play um, is experienced in that very consensual and very playful mm -hmm, way, right. like that could be really, really fun. Right. So, but what is also interesting is that the author um, is also a female, right. right? And so, again, what does that mean that we <laughs> attack that, um, that sort of, you know, uh, work or text uh, because it is a woman sort of, ex sort of expressing um, her sexuality, but again, another sort of criticism of that work is that that is you know badly written and all that stuff. But <laughs> yeah, but, well, that's know. for sure. Anyway, right? What was that inner goddess thing? Oh my God, it's just like let's not go there. Um, we only have a short time left. Um, you mentioned your book several times. Is yes. this a book in the making? You want to talk a little bit the, about yeah, what it's that's It's a book about. in the making. This this book focuses on Asian women's sexuality in cyberspace and how the notion of pain is really attached to the understanding of what Asian woman and Asian woman sexuality is. And I'm working on the last chapter of it. Hopefully, we'll you know get it done before the end of the year, and uh, we'll let you know. Well, out. before that, though, mm -hmm. we have part two, so you're not going that's away. Right, in the that's future. right. That's right. I'll be more than happy to come back. And what do you want to focus on then? And how do you think we should yes. lead this people? kind of yes. dangling yes. with how we should wrap up, or we'll never wrap it up, but yes. this concept of yes. porn and pain. Yeah, so I really think about the pain that is circulated through and within the porn industry. What that means is that when you watch porn, do you actually feel the pain? Can you feel the pain of the workers, right, who are there to work, right? Because one of the ways in which we can only um, or, or find pleasure in pain is when we, I mean, experience porn is that when we different when we distance ourselves or detach ourselves from the pain that is um, circulated within the porn industry so let me just stop right there Whoa. and you know raises more questions than answers I think that's exactly what you did you opened up a can of worms kind of uh, juicy worms to talk about you know again this is a, a difficult topic for a lot of people because we don't want to go there so hopefully next time when IU comes on again is we will talk about this uh, um, why it's in our faces and why it's part of uh, our daily lives in a way it's so affecting and how we can deal with it if people have children out there including myself how do we approach this topic with them um, and how do you engage in this uh, healthy conversation about what's out there what's appropriate not appropriate and pleasures for ourselves I think I like that one on the women and pleasure I think that's a huge one Are you thank you so much thank for so much sharing for all that me. for us Absolutely. part one only I'm not saying goodbye to her she's got so much rich details about women's studies uh, we will be back next time thanks for tuning in today